Okay, we're going to conduct a few experiments with the HHO generating system. With an ordinary light bulb, well not an ordinary light bulb, this is for the headlight of my motorcycle. It's a spare one that I happen to have. And uh, problems that people constantly have with their HHO generators are that they draw too much power. Well, we're going to address, uh, try to address some of those problems. And one thing we're going to do is we're going to have a little conductivity test. And we're going to do it poor man style. Meaning, uh, the average person doesn't have a lot of stuff. And neither do I. So we're going to do this four man fashion and use simple things to do simple tests that anybody should be able to repeat on their own. Okay? Now this is the HHO generator for my truck and we run a heavier solution than my motorbike. Heavier meaning I have more electrolyte in here. Uh, this one I do believe we have baking soda uh, it might have MSG in it, I don't remember which, but it has one of the two, and it is a heavier solution than the motorbike. The motorbike has to draw very little power off the battery or run dead. So here's a conductivity test. Here's how much power we're drawing. with this unit as you can see it's a very actually a very small amount when ran through a headlight bulb in serial not parallel first it runs through the light then it runs through the generator and so there's how much conductivity we have okay same test on my motorbike we have a weaker solution in this to draw less amps. So let's turn the bike on. Bear with me here while I set the camera down. I touch it to that and you see don't even see a glow. Not one bit of glow we are connected how do we know we're connected well there we know we're connected zero practically zero illumination from this high watt bulb all right we're going to do a little, little experiment here. This is my old HHO cell. It's giving me problems and I always have to tinker with it, but for our test, it, it'll be perfect. Here's my uh, truck cell. We're not using that one. We want to be able to have some visibility here, so that's why this is perfect. And we're not trying to capture gas, so we don't have the lid on it. That's why this is perfect. I want a bit nice open area. And we, all we have in here is ordinary tap water. And as you see, we have zero reaction. Okay, for this experiment, uh, we're going to use baking soda and MSG. MSG is the secret ingredient that you're not supposed to ask for in the Chinese restaurants. You know, you go in and say no MSG, that's the stuff. What it is is commonly called in with uh, Asia folk is Chinese salt. What it is, the MSG stands for mono sodium glutamate. So this is a sodium and this is a sodium too. This is sodium bicarbonate. 
so we have two sodiums here that are not common table salt. I have used both and both work very good. They are not very corrosive. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these and see how conductive we can get this. First we're going to take some MSG and we're going to take some baking soda lots of it. As you can see we are exploding Just shut off the power. Now we're going to add even more baking soda and another spoon of MSG. We'll stir this around. Now we have probably quadru quadruple the uh, amount of electrolyte that I would normally use and as we hook the power back up you'll see that baby explode and we're going to take even more and stir it up and apply power look at that baby go now why are we doing this because we're going to try a, to use another method to reduce the amount of voltage that you use and we're going to do that with with a common bulb this is a high wattage bulb what we're going to do is we're going to hook this in between in serial we're going to hook it up serial not parallel in the line so first the power is going to run through the jar then it's going to run through the light bulb why because we're going to use the light bulb as a resistor why well we'll get to that okay this test we have a tremendous amount of electrolyte in this water and we have a light bulb. Now if you ran the power through the jar by itself with this much electrolyte you would use you would lose a lot of amperage and you would drain the battery and you probably fry your alternator or whatever generator you have in your system be it uh, car, truck or motorcycle so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this light bulb as a resistor we know that the light bulb if you ran the light bulb that it would use the right amount of energy for your car because the, the vehicle was meant to use a light bulb it's the same light bulb as in my motorcycle as you see we do have a lot of power going through the light bulb and we are making quite a lot of hydrogen. This is a successful test.
Why is it a successful test? Because the point that I wanted to stress was that uh, most people just want to run like this. Straight hookup. Straight hookup to the battery and then figure out how to draw less amps. So what we have here is is we take away that thinking. Think outside the box. Now what we've done here is we're running through the light bulb and then the ground. Why do we do that? Because if we take all the electrical stuff and run it with the jar as the ground and we have zero resistance from the jar then all of the power that runs through that runs through the car or bike could then be channeled to the jar and then to ground thus allowing you to run everything in your car or bike and not use one extra bit of power and still be able to run the jar. I hope you understand that. So what were what were what the experiment was, was for was to run power to the headlight and instead of running the ground to the headlight we run power to the HHO cell and the HHO cell has a super high concentrate of electrolyte for zero or near zero resistance that way we are not running uh, parallel off the battery we are running serial in series we are running in series therefore we have we haven't added an extra thing to draw power from our vehicles I hope this makes sense